Welcome back, you beautiful viewers. So yesterday, or the day before, hopefully yesterday, by the time I'm done editing these, you guys got a chance to see my reactions to the first six episodes of Star Trek Discovery. Well, today I'm going to give you the next... Fuck, nine... Again, these are just going to be my reactions. I'm not going to be reviewing this, but I will give my final thoughts on my viewing throughout the day at the end of the episode. So if you guys want my full-on review, that is going to be in part three, which might take me a couple of days because I have a feeling I'm going to be Star Trekked out. And like always, make sure that you're hitting that subscribe button down below. Oh, and if you guys have been watching us for a while, like, probably since the beginning, because uh, quite a few of you guys have. You might notice that I sound a little bit better. Uh, huge shout out to Crazy Will's Tech Show. Uh, he suggested an awesome rig and an awesome microphone to help my videos sound a little bit better and um, look and feel a little bit more professional. So huge shout out to Crazy Will's Tech Show. All right, that being said, you guys ready? Because I sure am. Let's get on to number seven. As the USS Discovery crew attempts to let loose at a party, an unwelcome visitor comes aboard, bringing a problematic and twisted sequence of events. I'm conflicted. See, here's the thing. Full-on spoilers for this episode, If it's fucking Groundhog's Day. Yeah, I don't care. It's Groundhog's Day. Look, I mean... This is actually one of my favorite tropes to be used on TV. I've loved it every time it's been used on fucking Xena, on Supernatural. Uh, I guess Star Trek did it first, but, you know, here on Star Trek Discovery, I actually really, really, really like these episodes. And I really liked this episode. But again, in the context of this season, 15 episodes is a fuck ton to watch in two days binging, man. Especially when they're all, like, anywhere between 45 to, like, an hour long. But it is not that long to cover this giant, sprawling, intergalactic war that's been talked about for the better part of half a century. So wasting an episode on Groundhog's Day that does absolutely nothing to add to the narrative of the season kind of pisses me off a little bit. But like I said, I'm conflicted because I like the episode for what it is. And if there was... 22 episodes, you have time for bottle episodes like this. You really do. But in 15 episodes in the season, you really need to make these episodes count. Um, it just felt shoehorned in because, hey, let's do Groundhog's Day. Why not? All right, let's just say good Groundhog's Day episode, bad usage of Groundhog Day's episode. So that's where I stand on it. All right, next one. The USS Discovery is tasked with a high-priority mission to the planet Pavo and learn the science behind the Klingon's cloaking technology. Okay, at least this one is narrative appropriate, but it does make me not really like Saru that much. And Saru's been kind of a really cool character throughout this season so far. I haven't really mentioned him too much, um, but he's a really, really cool character. I, I like him. I like him a lot, but uh, he's always giving Barnum shit for being a defector and not thinking the right ways and blah, 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 but he's kind of a hypocrite now. I'd have to say that this episode was mediocre at best. It did start to bring the war back in. It was very, very cerebral, which I like, but honestly, the best part of this episode was the name of it, which was really badass in the context. See this Pacum Parabellum, which granted I didn't take Latin in school and I'm pretty sure I'm butchering the butchering the pronunciation. Well I just butchered the pronunciation of butcher. But uh, the rough translation is if you want peace prepare for war, which is kind of central to what this episode deals with and frankly, it's also really central to the whole theme of the show in general. But, mediocre episode. Um, wish I could say more, but there's a lot more Star Trek to get to. So let's move on to the next one. Bypassing Starfleet's orders, 
Lorca uses the USS Discovery's crew's ultimate asset, the ship itself, in an effort to end the war with the Klingons once and for all. This episode had a lot of wind to it, okay? If only visually. Uh, it was pretty damn badass and pretty much, um, I guess last episode was a part of a two-parter. Like, I'm... This episode kind of set up the mid-season finale when they went on break for a little while. So I guess it was like a two-parter mid-season finale. Uh, this was the second part of it. And I like this part better than the first. The way the ship just makes these instantaneous jumps from side to side to side to side and boom, I'm over here. Boom, I'm over here. Boom, I'm down here. Using that type of technology and weaponizing it to kind of map out where the... Cleon ship is because they've got cloaking technology and the Discovery does not. I thought that was a really damn cool idea and it was beautiful to see that uh, utilized on screen. Um, Story-wise, it was good. It was solid. Uh, I'm really confused as to what happened at the end, but luckily we don't have a mid-season finale. We can just binge right through this. We can just go. So as a matter of fact, let's go. And I, I, I think this is going to go into really cool places. While in unfamiliar territory, the USS Discovery's crew is forced to get creative in their next efforts to survive opposing and unprecedented forces and return home. I might have been wrong about that. Um, going in cool places, I didn't actually mean that literally, and apparently the show thinks I did. So I guess we're now in Star Trek's version of Earth 2, to use, you know, Flash and multiverse terms. I'm gonna be very blunt right now. Again, I love this type of storyline. I love playing with string theory. I love dealing with alternate dimensions in different versions of ourselves. It's why I love sliders. It's why I'm at, part of the reason why I'm in love with The Flash on CW. But if they finish out the season here, I'm going to get kind of pissed. Because from what I was told, the Klingon War is only supposed to last for this season. Um, so this better end really damn quick. But for what the episode was, it was really, really cool. Um, to see Tilly go from, like, the happy, chittering, word-vomit-spewing, adorable girl to, like, badass, awesome, like, has the nickname Killy. Uh, evil Tilly is awesome and hot and a great character. And to see her put on that performance, and then her own reactions to that performance was phenomenal. Um, Burnham and Lorca, treasures like always. So, let's go. Next episode. As the crew continues their guise, Burnham undergoes a merciless mission in hopes of helping the USS Discovery return home. Tilly works on restoring Stamets neurofunction. Okay... We're still there. Another really good episode. Um, it's showing a universe that could have been. Uh, and I like that. When you're seeing big bad guys and main villains uh, essentially leading the charge in the resistance and you're seeing that the side that you're currently on, you believe that you're the side of good. In, these, in this universe, you're a tyrant. So to see that, I, I always like the uh, the flipping of roles in shows like this, I or in shows in general. I think it's really cool. I think it can be a really effective tool to be used um, because self-reflection is great. Self-reflection in our characters is even more powerful because it allows us to look through that same lens and question, you know, what would you do? This might be cool to watch, but what would you do in the situation? What honestly what side honestly do you identify with so i've always liked this but we're still in the multiverse and but this episode is still yet another episode that does not deal with the klingon war and i thought that was going to be our main focus for this season maybe what i read was wrong and the war is going to keep going through another season or two if that is the case 
then everything that I'm saying right now, just scrap it because it'll be fine at that point. I'll, I'll have zero problem that we're exploring this story arc if that is going to be the case. But uh, time will tell, I guess. All right, let's go on. Next episode. Burnham heads to the ISS Charon with a special gift for the Emperor. With the help of an unexpected source, Stamets gains clarity while trapped inside the mycelial network. Saru asks for Lorel's help. Okay, we're still there. Yet another good episode. Um, there was a few things that I didn't talk about in the last episode, uh, just mostly because I'm trying to go fast, just to try to fit all of this in for you guys. But uh, I like how... Even in this world where you're seeing the dark versions of yourself and where we saw at the end of last episode that the Emperor is Captain Philippa, who has been, the memory of Philippa's death has been torturing not just uh, Burnham, but Saru and lots of the other crew on the Discovery because they used to be on the uh, Shinzo with Burnham and with Philippa. So to see evil Philippa is actually the Emperor was pretty damn badass. And on top of that, to see that in this world gone mad, that Ash Tyler was a double agent and that he was programmed Manchurian candidate style. I would definitely have to say yet another solid episode, but we're still in the multiverse. So... If they had dealt with this storyline the entire way through, this could have been badass, but considering that they got there on, what, episode 9 or 10, I don't even feel like they have enough time in this, um, in Earth 2 or in the, the second universe, in the dark side universe, to really explore everything that they could and tell a really solid story in there, let alone finish up the war. Um, I really feel like they're biting off more than they can chew with what's going on this season, but... Yeah. What do I know? I'm, I'm a writer myself, but I don't have a job on this show, so what the hell do I know? Alright, next episode. Lorca plans to move forward with the coup against the Emperor, propelling Burnham to make a quick decision to save not only herself, but the USS Discovery. Alright, action-packed episode. Absolutely awesome. Uh, lots, of, lots of violence, lots of uh, subterfuge, lots of... Burnham being fucking John McClane, man. She spends so much time using her brain instead of her guns, instead of her brawn. That is what makes a true hero. It's not just hair triggering that gun and shit like that. It's outsmarting the enemy. And unfortunately, Lorca is the enemy, which still pisses me off, but it is what it is. So this episode, definitely solid, definitely good. Again, we're in the multiverse, but at least we're getting out. So that leaves us with two episodes left. <sighs> I feel like they didn't have the time to tell the story that they could have told in this universe, man, because they could have gone deep cuts. If they shouldn't, they should never have started out with this in the first season. They should have gone to this in the second or third season and really developed what they could have done. Spend more time there, man. Uh, spend more time with these characters, the reflections of themselves, to show you all the good that is in you, especially with characters as ambiguous as Lorca, who never should have been from this universe, or characters as conflicted and just torn apart emotionally as Burnham. I mean, the things that you could have done with this story arc were astronomical, but they just rushed right through it, kind of like I'm rushing through these episodes, but these are just my feelings and just my reactions. So, all right, two left, We're back in prime. How's this season gonna end? Back on the USS Discovery, Burnham and the crew are faced with the harsh reality of war during their absence in order to move forward. Starfleet must use unconventional tactics and sources to take their next action against the Klingons. Well, I will give them this. Lorca was not the only morally ambiguous Starfleet member. Admittedly, it's cool to see the Admiral and see Sarek both at the end of any real 
rope. I mean, they've given the clay on all the rope. They have no more ropes. They've given them the ropes. Now they they're they're left with nothing else. Um, even I have to admit that uh, they've gone a bit dark. So this really pissed me off, though. Uh, they flashed forward nine months. So there's been nine months of this war raging on. Nine months of character building, of universe building, of things that we've heard alluded to in other show or in other iterations of Star Trek that we're not going to be able to see. We're not going to be able to feel the fires of their war. And I'm not saying that this should have been a war show in its entirety, but what I'm saying is that Star Trek has always been about the Boy Scouts. It's always been about, oh, golly gee willikers and doing the right thing. And I'm not condemning that. What I'm saying is I think it would be extremely interesting to show that and to show the moral complexities of that within the realm of an interstellar war. Missed opportunity. Missed fucking opportunity. I don't care if the showrunner was uh, removed from the show a couple of months in or not. There's no excuse for just jumping forward nine months. That is so fucking lazy. Uh, what we got in this episode was good, and there's nothing saying that you can't go in with, you know, some bad shit happened and some dark shit was going down, but the way this war was raging, even if you only went in a fucking month, Something catastrophic could have happened and, you know, everything is doom and gloom. Nine months? Dude, a fu fucking babies are being born, okay? This is... <sighs> God damn. <laughs> uh, we got, we got the uh, finale left to go. Let's do it. With Giorgio at the helm of the plan to end the Klingon War once and for all, the USS Discovery's crew struggles to fathom and tolerate her hostile tactics. Memories of the past hardships are rekindled within Burnham. Protect us from our basest instincts. The Klingons are on the verge of wiping out the Federation. We do not have the luxury of principle. That is all we have! What? Dude, what the fuck was that? That is our finale? DISAPPOINTED! Well, I wanted moral complexity, and I guess the prospect of committing genocide is moral complexity. But, god damn, dude. I... DISAPPOINTED! Fuck me. This was probably Burnham's strongest episode by far. Um... And I never again want to hear anybody bitching at her about mutiny, but this was a letdown. Well, this is only supposed to be my reaction, so that's my reaction. So final thoughts for tonight. This half of the season had some real high highs and it had some real real low lows. I I enjoyed myself thoroughly watching these episodes. The problem that I have is I was watching two completely different narratives the entire time. I'm watching the war and I'm watching the multiverse storyline and neither of which gave us enough or ended well. Uh, for lack of a better term. See, this, this show gave us an amazing captain with Lorca. I mean, he was fucking harsh and then they just ruined him they just flat out destroyed him and you know it is what it is i guess but way too short of an arc to do what they were trying to do with earth 2 it i is what i'm calling it i don't know the the dark universe whatever this season was supposed to take place, you know, during... It, it was supposed to be about the Klingon War. And I feel like the war was a backdrop, if that. It felt like it was something that was always going on in the background, but even less so than Casablanca, really, because that that's a love story that takes place during World War II. But World War II is only the backdrop of what's going on. It's not really a war movie. 
I definitely enjoyed my day watching this, but I mean, this finale let me down, dude. Uh, it gave me just enough to squeal with delight at a couple of situations, but fuck you all access, I ain't paying for you. So that's my initial reactions. Uh, am I way off base? Did I watch the wrong show? Did I watch this show wrong? Uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, these are just my reactions. I'm gonna wait a couple of days to kind of pontificate and, I don't know, listen to some Trek fans, listen to what they have to say, and kind of make my final opinion. I gotta let this settle, because there was a lot of great stuff in this, and there was some real, real big buckets of suck. So, again, let, let us know in the comments what you guys think. Um, tell us what you think about the show. Tell me what you think about the split seasons, you know? And don't forget to subscribe and hit that share button. That way more people can find the channel and enjoy what we're enjoying and get pissed off at what we're getting pissed off about. I'll be seeing you guys later.